from 27 yards. He's got it, and he's matched Mason Crosby. Colorado record 10 consecutive makes. Well, that was the only scoring for the Colorado Buffaloes in a 45-3 loss on the road against the 13-rated Ducks. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Buffalo Stampede. Voice of the boss, Mark Johnson. Well, the coach, Gary Barnett. That was a long night here in Eugene, Oregon. It was a long night, and, uh, you, you know, we prolonged it ourselves. Yeah. Uh, we shot ourselves in the foot a number of times. We played a really good football team uh, that executed pretty well tonight, and, uh, I, you know, I think we all knew that the key to this game was that our offense had to do their part, and, uh, and they didn't, yeah. Mark. Uh, 14 penalties, um, four interceptions, uh, you know, missed opportunities right and left, and uh, you can't do that in a game uh, against a team like this. So it, it just, it, uh, it, we put too much pressure on our defense, a young defense that not only is it young, it's banged up and inexperienced, and, you can't put that kind of pressure on your on your defense. You've got to take some of that pressure off with your offense, and we didn't do it. Yeah, that offense, which came into this year feeling it was going to be special, that'd be explosive, really kind of let the team down and didn't produce tonight. 14 penalties for 114 yards. That's 22 penalties in the last couple of ball games. What does that indicate? Well, you know, the first thing that pops in your head is it's the lack of discipline, and uh, we had a couple selfish penalties tonight. We had a couple personal fouls. We had a couple last week, and. Um, you know that I, I think the coaching staff's got to take control of that, yeah. and, and the and the seniors on this football team have to take control of that, because it, it's cost them two games. Yeah, yeah, without question. Stephen Montez throws four interceptions. Now three of them were deflected. One of them was terribly costly for the Buffaloes because they had a first down a goal to go from the two-yard line. We're down 17 to three right before the half, and it was a 14-point swing because Oregon went back the direction and scored on it. Well, I, you know, I I blame Stephen on one of those. He made a. He, he didn't see the safety, made a bad throw. But the other three, that's a good defense that flew to the football, ran to the football, and, and teams like that, you know, they had five interceptions going into this game yeah. in the red zone. They got another two tonight. So um, that's just the kind of team they are. So you can't make those mistakes against a team like that. Yeah, three of those, rece those interceptions were deflected passes picked up by that secondary for the Ducks in a 45 to three loss. By the way, we mic'd up defensive line coach Jimmy Brumbaugh before the ball game. Starts up front, play fast, play physical. Hey, hey, flip over, flip over. Other hand down, like here. Here we go, pass. Good job, turn up, set, hit, hit. Good job, him set, him go. Here's what I want, same thing. Two reps, pass, good job, good job. Set, him go, hit, hit, good job. Pass. Good job. Him go. Up here on my foot. Get off. Third down. Get off. Get the ball. Hit. Good job. Let's, Let's, go. Go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Spurs left. Hit. 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 Good job. Here we go. Partner up. One gap, two gap, one gap. One gap, two gap, one gap. Outside shade on that side. Hit. Peak. Hit. Peak. Release. Good job. Switch. Get in. Set him go. Other guy set. All together. Shade on this side, bud. Hit. Peak. Release. Come on. Come on. Here we go. Hey, let's go. Swim. Release. Two gap. Head up. Use the pad. Switch. 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 Hit. Peak. Release. Good job. Good job. Let's go. Cut off. Cut off. Hit. Hey, give me a little more. Hit. Good job right there. Good job. Hit. 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 One line. Hey, come here. Here we go. Up front on three. One, two, three. So the Buffaloes get beat 45 to three. Their record drops to three and three. One and two in Pac-12 conference play. All right, this is a tough situation for a first-year coach, and now you got to kind of coax this team through this, don't you? You do, and uh, you know you knew going into this game that you were probably outmanned and outgunned and you're on the road and you're banged up. And so the likelihood of winning this game depended upon you playing a perfect game. You didn't play a perfect game. You didn't come close to it. Uh, but you got a lot of football left and you have lots of opportunities out there. This team's trying to get to a postseason game. That, that means there's got to be three more games that they find yep. 
a few more teams that they can beat in this conference. This next week may be one of those teams, but uh, that's the way they have to go out and work. And, you know, I agree with, with Mel. He said the answers are in this locker room, and that means coaches and players. And that's how you go about it. You know, before we wrap this segment, about remiss if we didn't talk about Nate Landman. Uh, I, th that is a football play, and Jesse had 14, 15 tackles this ball game. It seemed like if you're looking for positives in the ball game, he's certainly one guy you could point to. All over the place, yeah. and, and and really has been all year, Mark, and it has been for a couple of years. He's just a terrific player. Road Warriors, that's what it is. Let's go. Doesn't make any difference. It's college football. We get to play another game, and it's against somebody else that maybe we can beat. Boy, a long one, though, here in Eugene, Oregon. Not the same as 2016 when the Buffs came in here and shocked the Ducks. This one was all Oregon, 45-3. to Coming up next, we're going to talk with one of the game captains from Friday night, punter Alex Kinney. Comes your way next. Well, there were the captains walking out in the field at Johnson Stadium last Friday night. Buffaloes end up dropping a contest to the Ducks. Back in the stampede, voice of the boss, Mark Johnson. One of those captains, Alex Kenny, the punter, joining us for a couple of minutes. I know it's a game-by-game -game thing. Mel's done something a little bit different here. You know, other coaches have gone captains for a year. Mel's done a game-by-game -game thing. Well, what does that mean to you guys when he gets selected as captain? Uh, I think it's really awesome. Last year, uh, I got hurt, and a bunch of other guys that were captains got hurt also. Yeah. But really doing the game by game, it makes sense. He didn't really know us coming in, so it's tough to figure out who is truly the captains. Sure. So it really shows what the uh, work they put in last week, and then they become captain this week. Like Bo, Bo could have been captain every week this year, but he's got it this year or this week. Yeah. I'd have to think as well. It, it does kind of spread it around. And the message probably is that all of you guys, you older guys, you're leaders in this team. So whether you're a game captain or not, hey, let's be a leader every, every single day out here. Yeah, no, it, I mean, it makes everyone accountable. And sometimes people look at uh, captains and say, oh, those are the leaders of the team. Sure. But really, we got 20, 30 guys that are leaders of the offense, defense, and special teams. All right, how about that game against uh, Oregon last week? Tough one for the Buffaloes, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, it was tough. Uh, just move past that. We're moving on to Washington State. So. What have you seen from this team in terms of Mel's leadership, the coaching staff leadership, how this group reacts to a loss, though? Uh, biggest thing is you got to embrace it. You got to understand that we didn't do our job last week, but that's why we get another opportunity this week to make those corrections and come back stronger. Yeah, Mel's kind of a no excuses kind of guy, isn't he? I mean, he, he was very clear on post game, did so on the radio with us, where he said, the answers will come from in this locker room and we have to look at ourselves. He's a no excuse kind of guy. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, like, after the games, he says, we got beat. We got to yeah. give them credit. And it's really, it's, it's our game to lose. Sure. Now the Buffaloes on the road this week against Washington State. This guy and James Stefano have been fantastic as the two specialists for the team. And we had a little fun with them on camera here just a short time ago. This is James Stefano, 32-year-old Australian kicker. He's going to be a junior this year, three-year starter. Next to me is Alex Kinney. He's got 10 years on me. There's a lot of competition between us two who can do the best trick shots. How about best of three? All right, let's do it. All right, from the 10-yard line, first one to hit the buffalo. You first. There we go. That's one. I mean, really, how tough was that? Easy. Come on, let's go. A little bit too high. Next too strong. It's one nothing. Let's take it outside now. All right, so you got me on the last one, eh? Let's see if you can split these arches. All right, let's see it. This good for you, yeah? Yep. I get half a point because I'm I'm holding the ball for you. There it is. Oh, kind of guts. All right, we'll see what I got. Oh, dang it. All right, so it's come down to the last one, mate. No. Uh, let's see you can drop it on the 50 at Folsom. Sounds good to me. Since this is the best view in college football, let's kick from up here. Winner takes it all. You ready? Here it comes. <laughs> yeah, good luck beating that one. That's not bad, eh? What a view, man. <laughs> you ready? Remember, it's all in the hole. Let's put it down. Oh, that's way too close to call. Let's head down there and take a look. Let's go. Man, that is ridiculous. It's way too close to call. Let's call it a draw. I'm good with that. All right, chest bump. Ooh. 
Well, the specialist having a little bit of fun there, James Stefano, who, by the way, tied the all-time record for consecutive field goals with Mason Crosby with 10 last week. And, uh, Alex Kennedy, you guys were having some fun with that deal, weren't you? Oh, yeah, it's awesome. I mean, it's always fun going out there, but once you're doing good, James went, what, he's 10 for 11 now, yeah. was 10 for 10. Yeah. It's awesome. It's been a lot of fun this year. Now, that little deal that we just saw, you, you know, that, that was based on a magic, or I beg your pardon, Michael Jordan, Larry Bird commercial from McDonald's years ago. Did you know that? I did not know so that. You're, that you're James, so James would know. I want it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. Yeah. Uh, can, can you actually do some of those trick shots? I mean, that's. Oh, yeah. It wasn't just camera tricks, right? No, we've, we've done some pretty cool trick shots that haven't been on camera. Uh, how about the way that you've been uh, punting this season so far? How do, how do you feel about it? I feel really comfortable. I mean, it's been, what, five years now that I've been here. So it's really just getting into a groove, which I feel like I'm in. And hopefully I can keep it through the colder and windier parts of the game. Like next week, I think it's going to be rainy, a little bit cold. But, I mean, it's all, all the same, just catch mold it and drop it. You know, it's kind of funny. We were on the radio show last week at the Post Brewing Company. We had Alex on, and I, I talked about how great those guys have been kicking, and he says, oh, hold on a second. The weather's about to get bad. That really does affect you guys. Oh, yeah. It's totally different. I mean, there's last year we had some snow games and some extremely windy games, and it really does affect it, but, I mean, you just got to keep doing what you do, and It'll work out. When it gets cold, what's the hardest part? Is it the grip and the ball trying to catch the snap? Is it trying to catch? What, what affects you the most once you're you know, dealing with weather elements? Hard Because i got to have my foot above my head when I punt. Yeah. So it's just keeping the hamstrings warm. And I don't want to use the – I don't want to stand by the heater for – Artificial. I just want to keep yeah. running and keep my legs warm. Wait till you're my age. It's always tough to keep the hand strings warm. That's never an, <laughs> never, never an easy deal. James will tell you that. Yeah. Hey, how about this game this weekend? I uh, got to have a bounce back, but another one on the road. Tough place to play in Pullman, Washington. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited for it. I mean, they're good, they're a good team, but I think we can come back. And uh, yeah, I, I'm excited for it, and hopefully, I don't have to punt too much. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, always, we're just field goals. Always a good day when he's just watching the ball game like the rest of us. All right, good luck this weekend. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate All it. All right, Alex Kitty, punter and captain last week for the Colorado Buffaloes. Up next, we're talking soccer. JJ Tompkins, the goalkeeper, is a record setter here at CU. That uh, comes your way next. But there's some great saves by uh, this young lady right here, who's now the all-time saves leader at the University of Colorado in soccer. She surpassed Sloan Cox with 322 in her career. Voice to the bus, Mark Johnson, J.J. Tompkins. Congratulations. How about that? Thank you. <laughs> does, that, does that sink in at all of what that means right now? Or is that something uh, 10 years from now you're going to go, you know, that's kind of cool? Um, I kind of didn't know that was a thing. You know, I just kind of, <laughs> you know, I knew I had the wins record, which was awesome. Yeah. I was excited about that. That happened against Drake, and that was really cool. And then... I think last week I saw on the thing like, oh, just has to beat. <laughs> You're getting close. 321, and yeah. obviously USC and UCLA will get me there. So <laughs> right. that was really cool. I think. What does it take to be a, a great goalkeeper um, in soccer? It's <laughs> a good question. Yeah. No, uh, just passion, love for okay. the game, and hard work. I mean, I've had great coaches growing up, and I've got coaches here who train me for every opportunity and every save I have to make. Jason's done a great job. Um, so I would say that, just that okay. want to work and want to get better every single day. You know, I, I grew up around, around hockey in the upper Midwest and, and you know, knew a lot of gold standards in hockey. Um, what are the key elements, do you think, to that skill? Never think you're getting scored on. Okay. I never think I'm going to get scored on any save. Um, but then also just I love to dive and I love to, like, you know, if it's money out, it's fun. I know I'm going to get a little dirty. That's awesome. Um, just no fear. Okay. Sling my body around for 90 minutes. That's really fun. Do you and you think of scouting reports that every team has in every sport? Are there scouting reports? Well, I know that she tries to go to this corner or that corner. Oh yeah, 100%. You know? We have great scouting reports. I mean, the, how detailed they are is incredible. Jason does a great job with them. Um, we. So yeah, I know right foot, left foot, where they're going most of the time, and I have a good idea, and that's what makes it easier. That's why, very lucky, we have great scouting reports always. <laughs> All right, well, she's the all-time <laughs> saves leader and wins leader here. University of Colorado. You know, we got another all-time great here at CU. We all love him. He's the athletic director, Rick George. He was just named to the team of excellence for the National Football Foundation. Yeah, it does feel pretty good. I mean, it's a nice recognition. You know, I love the game of football. I've, I've been around it all my life. And being at Colorado with our program and getting that back uh, where it 
should be is going to be fun. The recognition's great. It's terrific being associated with the people that are on that team is very nice and significant. So something I'm pretty happy about. The National Football Foundation, one is they're really responsible for the Hall of Fame. So the nominees and the selection every year. Part of that has built a Hall of Fame in Atlanta a few years ago and that was big for them. They do scholar athletes uh, all over the country. Part of their Hall of Fame induction is having student athletes from around the country that win these excellence awards and, and then they've got this group called Football Matters and I'm on that board and that's really a group that is focused on messaging about the game of football and all the positive aspects of the 150th anniversary and all those kind of things. How about that? I was giving Rick a hard time, by the way. On that team, he's just behind Ronnie Lott as a defensive back on the team of excellence. That might be the only team he and Ronnie Lott are ever going to be on. You deal a lot with Rick. Yeah, as oh, Rick's the best. Isn't he the best? The best, the GOAT. Isn't it funny, too? Though? I mean, a lot of athletic directors some places I've been, you know, they're, they run everything and they're kind of above it all. Rick's really kind of down in the trenches with all of you student athletes. Oh, 100%. I, I don't know any other athletic director in general, but I would yeah. assume I don't know many that know every single name of every single athlete. Yeah. I mean, he's always talking to us, always coming up to us during snack and talking to us about the weekend, the games, upcoming games, what we're doing. And then obviously he's been a huge help for me with my uh, Boulder Buffs group. And so right. incredible. Yeah, that Boulder Buffs group deals with uh, student athletes and mental health. And that's been a passion for him. And yeah. I know he's been right there with you. Yeah, I mean, he's supported 100% of the way he's all but said please do this <laughs> giving you every single resource that I could ever imagine and so he's incredible I mean and he's at every game yeah. he's probably one of the loudest cheers at the game in general <laughs> every game so <laughs> I know the officials always here but he's there yeah. I do know that all right let's talk about the soccer team you guys want to get back, get back on the uh, winning track here pretty soon right yeah so we've yeah. had a couple of rough games but that's okay we've worked really hard and there's been some really good soccer within those 90 minutes so mm -hmm. we're hoping to play ASC this weekend which will be a great game they're a very good team so I'm hoping that we can get back on track and hopefully get a W on Saturday as you've stubbed your toe here the last uh, couple of matches what, what, what do you think the uh, liabilities been I just think we have to come out a little bit harder each game as mm -hmm. you know first 15 minutes of each half we need to come out a little bit stronger a little bit sharper but um, you know we're gonna get back to it you can't you can't back to is the best in the country so you can't get too phased on one weekend USC is number three in the country UCLA is number 22 um, so you can't you can be upset and you can learn sure. from it, but you also have to grow and understand that these are the best play teams you're going to play. And so now it's to get better. You know, if you don't play the good teams, you never have the opportunity to get better. It's so always good to be back home at Prentice Field. Oh, 100%. Best Great field atmosphere. in the nation. <laughs> yeah, without question. All right, good luck this weekend. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, JJ. She's the all-time saves leader here at the University of Colorado. They're getting ready for this weekend's action. Coming up next here in the Stampede, we're talking golf. Daniel O'Loughlin is going to join us. There's some great images from the Mark Simpson Invitational. Great coach, Mark Simpson, here at the University of Colorado. Roy Edwards leading the Buffaloes to uh, winning that title. we got the medalist with us. Daniel O'Loughlin joining us here for a couple of minutes. Uh, certainly a good week for the men's golf team, huh? Yeah, I mean, it was great. Um, obviously, the team scoring was fantastic. I think it was 35 under total, which is one of our lowest ever scores as a team in that tournament. Uh, and then obviously getting the individual title was just cherry on top, really. Yeah, to talk a little bit about uh, your effort, uh, that was uh, three great rounds for you, wasn't it? Yeah, three rounds in the 60s. I don't know if I've done that before. Huh. Um, but final round, I was kind of struggling a little bit, the first 12 or 13 holes. But obviously I finished hot, finished, uh, birdied three of the last four holes. I was going to say, and you and had I, to uh, finish off. I had to on. do it, yeah, yeah. had to do it, because I was kind of aware of the guy in my group. Okay. He was sort of leading the pack, so I thought, I've got to do something here. If I'm going to get any sniff of action, like, for first place. This guy right here, by the way, he's got a little distinction here at the University of Colorado. The only player in history to have two seasons where you average under par. You've done each yes. last two, correct? Yes, that's true. I didn't, that's like really good score. I didn't realize yeah. I was the first person in history to do that. So that. hopefully I can maintain it. His, his highest round, by the way, is only a 78. Only a 78, so yeah. That, I mean, that's, and it, it, that's what golf's all about, being consistent. Absolutely, it? yeah. That's what, that's what great college teams are. They're just consistent, like players one through five. That's what you gotta be to do. Yeah. You gotta do that to play well. What's, what's the strength of your game? Um, I've always been a really good driver and iron player. Like, again, last week I gave myself a lot of chances with my long game, and then it was just a matter of taking the chance of my putter. Okay. Um, and last week I kind of did all, put all three together, right. which is always nice. What, what has Roy, you think, added to your game since you've been here? I mean, he's, he's changed my whole way of course management, the way I look at golf courses, um, preparing as well. Mm. But he's so good with the team with course management and getting us to hit the right shots and kind of emphasizing the importance of short game and how short game can basically save a whole round. 
Um, so he's really drilled that into us. And obviously, last week it came into play, and it just shows how well we can do. Well, it was a great week, no, undoubtedly, for the uh, Colorado men's golf team. Roy Edwards, we caught up with him after the team took the title at the Mark Simpson Invitational. Well, it was a special day, obviously. Um, Daniel coming back and, and getting a co-medalist, pretty special. Uh, Birdie in three of his last four holes was awesome. And then, I mean, honestly, the whole team played played really well, especially down the stretch. That was that was the coolest thing. I, th I feel like yesterday and today, most of the days, we had played well, hadn't made putts. And then, especially in the back nine, we're able to make some putts. Adam Madison and Ross McDonald were unbelievable today, 66. and. Um, Adam had 69, but he birdied five of his last seven holes to do it, which was, which was huge for us because we were in a dogfight for sure. You know, I think there, every single day, um, I, th I think about Coach Simpson. Um, I didn't play here, I didn't play for him, um, but he was a golf coach here for 29 years. I mean, this is, this is and kind of always will be his program. So. Really, the, the, the way the guys play today, to, to honor that um, is, is awesome. Um, it's, it's not really something I, I personally consider um, on, on my end. It's just anytime you're mentioned with a legend like, like Coach Simpson and, and the great legacy that he has here for CU Golf, it's, it's an incredible honor. I mean, it, and hopefully, hopefully what I'm doing and what our team is doing is, is honoring how important CU Golf was to Coach Simpson every day. Um, and that's really that's really what we're trying to do out here. Great words from the head coach, who, by the way, this week celebrating a birthday. You guys going to do anything for him? Oh, we'll we'll throw him a little party. I'm sure <laughs> we will. We'll give him something to practice. We we'll got a team gift. Hey, how did you get here? Now you're from Nottingham, England. I, I think you could probably tell yes. from the accent. Yes. So, Colorado was not your first stop. No. So I originally started out at McNeese State um, in Louisiana, Lake Charles. Um, I mean, it was I really enjoyed it. It was a great place, and then. After freshman year, I transferred to Colorado. Obviously, a massive culture shock. Right. Louisiana versus Colorado. <laughs> no offense to anyone from right. Louisiana. But well, it was a culture shock going yeah, from Nottingham, England yeah, to England, the state. Yeah. Um, but no, it was, I, I, it was a smooth process. Why come here to the States? Uh, I mean, we just, obviously, I value my education mm -hmm. a lot. And back home, we don't have the support system that you guys do here. Okay. Um, so they usually try and fit, well, sport and your studies go hand in hand, whereas back home, you kind of sport takes a step back from your studies. Okay. And you don't have the support and everything we have here. Are golfers athletes? Yeah, yeah. I think so. I mean, yeah. you got, it's a changing game. You know, that's always been the big debate. Yeah. Right? It's a but, skill game, it's a very mental yeah, game. But it's yeah. getting faster. You know, the guys are getting fitter, more athletic. Uh, you only need to look at the guy, top 10 in the world, and they're all in the gym every day pumping weights. Don't um, you think Tiger Woods changed that? I think so, yeah. He was the first one who really did it, and he kind of took just absolutely blew away the field so that helped all right well he's a great golfer and he's an athlete by the way good luck the rest of the season thank you all right daniel lachlan for the uh, cu men's golf team which we put a wrap with the stampede this week thanks for joining us i'm voice of the bus mark johnson we'll talk to you next time